What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to try a amplifier brand you probably never heard of. Top Strong Gear. That's right. Top Strong Gear. I never heard of it before either. Somebody on Facebook told me about it, but yeah, I picked this amp up. $89.99. 1500 watts is what it says. I'm like, yeah, right. There is no way in this world a $90 amp is going to do 1500 watts. Now, just want to let you guys know, the price has since gone up by $20, and who knows what it'll be when you see this. Who knows if it'll even be available. I don't have any control over that. I apologize. Let's take the amp out of the box, see what it's all about. You can see here, very small footprint. Almost fits in the palm of your hand. It does come with a variable bass remote here. It's a plastic bass remote that has the telephone-style connection on it, which is nice because it doesn't pull out of the amp but it's plastic and cheap as you'd expect from an amplifier so inexpensive. Comes with the mounting screws and two different size hex keys or Allen keys, whoever's keys they may be that you're borrowing. But here's the amp itself. You can notice the model number is TSG 1100.1 and my thoughts were maybe this is an 1100 watt amp and they just call it 1500 watts. I don't know. We will find out, the dyno will tell us, but you guys may notice this amp looks similar to a different amp that we've tested before. We're going to show some comparisons coming up later. All right, now we'll talk about the layout of the amplifier. We'll see the inputs and outputs on each side, the different controls, and how that stuff works, and later we'll get to some of the specs. Here on the one side, you can see the dual RCA. We have an input and an output. We also have a low pass and a high pass filter. This amp can be run full range if you want it to. Gain control. And then for the bass boost, there's a 0 to 12 dB gain adjustment as well as a frequency adjustment. This is what we like to see on bass boost. Then you have a remote connection, a power clip protection LED, as well as a single speaker output with approximately 8 gauge connections. Although this amplifier is a mono block amp, we do like to see dual speaker outputs on mono amps. That way it gives you the ability to hook up multiple speakers easily. So that's one thing this amp is missing. On the opposite side, we have the power, the remote, and the ground connections. The power and ground are 4 gauge, and the remote is 8 gauge, because you know everybody needs 8 gauge for their remote connection. You big dummy! I talked about it a little earlier. This amp does look very similar to another amplifier, and that is the Sundown SFB1000D. You can see there's a few differences there on the exterior, the style of RCAs, and also the Sundown has more speaker outputs. But yeah, as far as dimensions go, it's about 6.25 inches on the long end, 6 inches wide if you include the terminals. Without the terminals, it's a little bit less, but you're going to have to include the terminals for that width and then for the height it is 2.75 inches or approximately 70 millimeters as far as the specs go it's rated 510 watts at 4 ohms 800 watts at 2 ohms or 1500 watts at 1 ohm those are all 14.4 volts dc it says maximum output power here i don't know we'll find out that when we get to that point of the test signal to noise ratio 100 db frequency response 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz, okay. And then the bass boost has 50 hertz, 0 to 12 dB, but you saw it's adjustable as well. And as far as the minimum voltage is 9 volts, maximum voltage input is 16 volts. Now the part that many of you like to see is when we fire up the good old SMD DeMore Engineering Amplifier Dyno to test out the amp. Before we get to that point though, make sure you check the video description for Wilson Audio Merch smash me a thumbs up it's always greatly appreciated now let's move on to the 4 ohm mono test rated 510 watts 14.4 volts let's try certified 40 hertz 1 percent thd and yes we got the 510 we got 516 at 14.36 now with ninja like speed i'll adjust the dyno to the uncertified mode and we'll try that up to the clipping point Again, in 4 ohms, rated at 510 watts. We expect to see a little bit more here. And we do. It's continuing to count. 535 watts at 14.22 volts. Again, we'll get out our ninja skills for adjusting the dyno. Change it to the dynamic mode. Simulating a dynamic 
speaker load onto the amplifier. Looks like 525 is where we're going to be at 14.16. Overall, it beat all its ratings. Very good. We always like to see an amp do its rated power. And as far as efficiency goes, 85% efficient at 4 ohms. That's a very good number here. We're impressed so far. Next up, we'll try 2 ohms monos rate 800 watts, 14.4 volts. Again, 40 hertz test. First test here certified 1% THD. 913. Oh, yes. Got that rated power plus some. That's what I'm talking about. Next up, uncertified up to clipping. Let's see it clip. Not see it blow. Look at this. We're getting close to a thousand watts. 996, 14.34. Dude, this is crazy for an amplifier that costs, well, in my case, $90. And dynamically, here we go. Getting close to a thousand watts again. Right at 14.44. 990, 14.44. Efficiency, again, very good. 83% at 2 ohms. I'm digging this, yo. All right, the 1 ohm test. Amplifier is rated 1,500 watts at 1 ohm. Here's the 40 hertz test certified, and nah, I didn't quite make it. 1,358 right at 14.4 volts. Let's rewire the dyno. Try it up here, uncertified. See if we can get that 1500 watts. And yes, we do, my friends. Easily. 1573, 14.22. I would consider this passing because it did it up to clipping. Dynamically, let's send a dynamic tone into the amp at 40 hertz. The dynamic power is good. Over 1600 watts here at about 14.5 volts. Finally, 1631 at 14.48. How about that efficiency, though? Let's check it out. Now, we the numbers jump kind of quick there for the current pool, so we averaged them and still got 77%. That's really, really good at 1 ohm. Did I just say really, really? <laughs> Whatever. Next up, let's do the results. I would say it's impressive for the money here. You can see every test, every result, it did rated power plus more except for the one ohm certified test 1358 watts right at 14.4 now you guys may notice there are some additional numbers over there on the right you can't see yet you got to stick around to the end to see those now let's hook it up to the subs and see if it bumped oh <laughs> they don't stay in there very long do they All right, how about we fill a little bass in DJ Magic Mike using the top strong gear. Right, guys if you can't tell this amp was making these subs absolutely slam the box was actually jumping around on the floor too i wasn't able to get a good video of that but it was impressive 
I was blown away, especially for the price of this amp. Next up, we're going to look and see what's inside. Is it a surprise? Let's take off the four screws on the bottom of the amp, including the one that breaks the warranty seal. So be it. Here is the amp. You can see classic full bridge type design. A few caps in here. We got the transformer. And yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Sundown SFB 1000, right? Pretty close. The biggest difference I can see is the transistors on the left and the right on the Sundown are flat against the board. The top strong gear, they're up against the side of the heat sink, but very close overall. Now we'll talk about the things we like. It's cheap, relatively speaking. It did rated power. It does include a base remote. It's very similar to the Sundown SFB1000 as we've shown. For the price, you're getting big power and great efficiency, but yeah, there's also some drawbacks too. You may notice this amp uses the cheap style RCAs versus the Tiffany style that the Sundown has. It also has a single output for a speaker, whereas the Sundown has dual outputs. The brand stigma, who knows what top strong gear is. The support may be non-existent and the price fluctuation and the availability you guys are going to get mad because who knows what the price will be and who knows if they'll be available. But all I know is this was a deal when I got it. Blown out of the water, top strong gear, TSG, 1100.1D. Wow. Crazy amplifier for the price. Outstanding. I'm glad I got this one when I did. Thanks as always for watching my videos. I appreciate your support. Patreon.com slash old school stereo. Special thanks goes out to my premium supporters. Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat. This is Big D. Until next time, I'm out of here. All right, those who have gone on Amazon already to check out this amp have noticed there's a four channel model also, and I've got that one. Honestly, I was gonna do it on this video, but it was just gonna be too long. So we'll do a different video if you like. Smash me a thumbs up. Let's try one ohm at one kilohertz since this is a full range amplifier. And it did not specify where it did 1500 watts. And you can see 1539 watts at one kilohertz. So it does its rated power at 1% THD certified at one kilohertz. Let's try uncertified at one kilohertz. And yeah, 1567 watts. So rated power plus some. And then finally, we will re adjust the dyno for the dynamic pulse at one kilohertz. And there you can see over 1700 watts. So there you have it again. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see the four channel. Big D out.